Hey, I'm Chevy. Hey, I'm Lee. Hey, I'm Naomi. Hey, I'm Anissa. And we're PME students and welcome to our podcast. Hello and good evening. My name is Ron Burgundy. And my name is Veronica Corningstone. And this evening we are going to look at moral development in adolescence. Firstly, we are going to look at a theorist named Lawrence Kohlberg and his six stages in moral development. We are also going to assess how teachers influence adolescent moral development. And finally, we are going to examine the teacher's opinion of moral development in the classroom. Lawrence Kohlberg was an American psychologist who was renowned for his work in the field of moral development and our reporter Shelley is going to look further into his work. In the following few slides we will look to define moral development. Moral development is the process where adolescents develop proper attitudes and behaviours towards other people based on social norms, rules and laws. Moral development is also how individuals ought to treat one another with respect to justice. Lawrence Kohlberg was an American psychologist who is known for his stages on moral development. Lawrence Kohlerich developed the moral theory of development. His theory is based on cognitive development and looked at how people developed their morals. The first stage is the pre-conventional stage, when right and wrong decisions are determined by reward or punishment. But also, children recognise that there isn't just one right view. Kohlberg believes this is the stage where children are up to the age of nine are at. The second stage is the conventional stage. Kohler believes that reasoning is based on the norm of the group in which the individual belongs. One stage inside this level is good intentions. An individual behaves well just to be seen by others for good behaviour. The other stage is law and order. The individual becomes aware of wider rules in order to uphold the law and avoid guilt. The final stage is the post-conventional stage. Kohlberg states that not many individuals reach this stage. This is the stage where individuals' judgment is based on self-chosen principles. Kohlberg told many dilemmas to children and asked them how they reasoned through these dilemmas. The most famous dilemma was the Heinz dilemma. Heinz's wife was dying from a special kind of cancer and only one medicine would cure her. Doctors at a local pharmaceutical company had developed this medicine and Heinz tried desperately to buy some, but the chemist was charging 10 times the amount. So Heinz went to his family and friends, but could only raise half of the amount. Heinz begged the chemist, could he sell it for less or pay the difference at another time? But the chemist refused. Later that night, Heinz broke into the chemist and stole the drug. Should Heinz have stolen the drug? That was very interesting, wasn't it, Veronica? But really, was it applicable to students or adolescents? Yes. How can we get the students to relate to this dilemma? Indeed, I think we should look at another dilemma, which is more relevant to students and adolescents. Kevin had just won the All-Ireland with the Gaelic football team. He had missed training with the soccer team all year. His coach came to talk to him and told him that he is going to be starting this Thursday in the final of the soccer. Kevin is going to be taking the place of one of his really good friends who's been training all year. Well, that was very interesting, wasn't it, Veronica? Um, a bit more relevant to students and adolescents in today's world. Yeah, exactly. So what do you think Kevin should do, Ron? It's a tricky one, Veronica. We have to consider Kevin's teammates in this situation. Now, you at home, how do you think Kevin's teammates may feel when Kevin just arrives onto the match without attending training? Exactly, Ron. And have you ever seen someone benefit from an unfair situation? So what do you think influences the decision, Ron? Well, again, this is a more tricky one. Um, our reporter, Anita, looked more into what influences moral development. When we look at studies today done by Boundless 2016 on the influences on adolescent development, the main influences that stand out are their peers, family members and members of their social circle. But first we need to define adolescence. According to the Child Development Institute, no date, adolescence begins at the age of 13 and continues until 18 years old. The World Health Organisation, no date, differ. 
believing that adolescence is now between 10 and 19 years old. This is because of changes occurring in the past century bringing earlier puberty, later age of marriage, urbanisation, world communication and changing attitudes and behaviours towards sex. As the child starts to develop and grow into an adolescent, their identity is forming and being influenced by their surrounding peers instead of their parents which can cause conflict at home. Peers can either have a good or bad effect on adolescent social skills depending on the group and peer pressure involved. Peer pressure can lead to high risk behaviour and it is our parents, community members, service providers and social institutions that must step up and take responsibility to help promote the development and adjustments needed by adolescents when problems arise during this time. This is where teachers come in. They can provide a positive environment for the adolescent to develop in. They can do this by example as well as encouraging good social behaviour and helping students emotional development. Teachers can aid with good moral development by allowing their students time to reflect. Some schools now focus on everything from community service to teaching students virtues, building good habits, rewarding positive behaviour and developing students' capacity for moral reasoning. As we can see, teachers have a significant influence on adolescents' moral development. That's very true, Veronica. A colleague of ours during the week caught up with a teacher in a local secondary school um, and he gave his opinion on moral development. Um, I've been asked here by the lovely Lee to speak about um, the moral development of um, adolescents, um, an area I think that's, that's close to the hearts of um, many if not all teachers as um, it is a subject area that's um, intrinsic in the um, ethos and the, probably the mission statement of every school, be it primary or secondary. Um, in, in Ireland. We oftentimes uh, focus on the negative but schools um, throughout Ireland will, will have, you know, they'll have buddy systems, they'll have anti-bullying policies, um, they will have scenarios where um, the, the, the promotion of um, strong moral fibre, doing the right thing is, is very, very close to the heart such as your, your CSPE programmes and your SPHE. Um, so I think um, it's incumbent on us as part of our job that we do um, look after the, the, the moral development of, of youngsters to look after their future. So to conclude, students must make judgments on a daily basis. In today's podcast you should have learned what moral development is and what influences adolescents in making their own judgment. We learned from the teacher's perspective that teachers need to act as role models in the school. For, like, for some students that mightn't have that role model at home. Um, schools also need to implement strategies such as the buddy system to help promote moral development in the school. In our earlier report, Ron, uh, Mike Lynn states that it's in the goodness of our job as teachers that we look after their moral development. Therefore, incorporating moral development into the school curriculum can extend beyond the decreased levels of antisocial and immoral behaviour for the students. Indeed. And research also shows that it helps students develop their theory of mind while also enhancing the academic success. So that's it for us here in the newsroom. Um, for me, Ron Burgundy. And myself, Brian Corningstone. Thanks for listening. Good night. Good night.